Hi, I'm Chef Alan Tatro with Global Sugar Art, and today we're going to continue our Buttercream Basics series, and today's lesson is decorating with the stars. And no, I'm not referring to my wonderful staff back here videotaping this. I'm referring to the star tips. They're made by Wilton, Atico, PME. There are several companies that make the decorating tubes that we're going to be using today. But today we're just going to work with star tips and we're going to go from basic to more complicated borders and I'll finish the program by decorating a cake just with star tips. So let's get started. To begin the series on, on decorating with the star tips, I want to talk about the specific tips that we're going to be using. There are different types of star tips. For instance, this is an open star tip and it comes in many sizes from size 13 to 22. And then you get closed star tips. This is a 31. There are others called 501, and there's also like 24 to 33. There are many different um, tips that are closed and many that are open. When I refer to this as being number 13 to 22, that means that there's a tip 13, 14, 15, 16, etc. And each one is slightly larger than the one before. Do you need all of them? No. You only just need a small sampling of each size, a few small and a few large, and maybe a medium tip to get all the work done that you need. And then there are specialty tips for ribbons and borders that are par partially starred and then the rest of it is flat. There are many more than this. Today we're going to work on basics and in future videos we'll work on some of the more specific and, and the more unusual star tips. To fix an open star tip, Wilton has this handy little gadget. Uh, it's a tip saver and basically you put the tip in the end and then you just insert this and you push and that will open up the tines of the tip at the end so that it decorates really well. Now if you have a closed star tip, you don't want to do that because then you're going to open that, those little tines on the end straight out and you're going to have an open star tip and that's not what you want. So this is a great tool for the open star tips and they do get banged in just by falling in the sink and being dropped on the counter you'll see them close in. So now let's get going with the decorating bag. I recommend for all beginners always use a small decorating bag. The biggest uh, problem I see with beginning decorators is using a large 16 or 18 inch decorating bag and they don't have the strength in their hand to push all that icing through a very small opening and then their hand and their arm start shaking and they never develop any skill. So if you're a beginner start with a small 8 or 10 inch decorating bag. It can be a canvas bag or these are the Wilton featherweight or you can even use like a key seal or some sort of a disposable bag. They work really well. And parchment paper works as well too. This is a coupler. You don't have to use this. This just makes decorating a lot easier. The coupler goes inside this bag. So the first thing you have to do when you buy a brand new bag is you have to cut part of the end off for this coupler to fit in. Now the trick is not cutting too much off because if the coupler goes all the way through you've basically ruined the bag. So I usually size them up and I figure about halfway and I'll just cut that much off. And then just slip that first part into the bottom of the bag. It should just come out a little bit. Um, the, the grooves, uh, the threads are still inside the plastic, which is okay. And then this ring will go right on the outside and it will screw right on. What that allows me to do is I can put a tip on, I can decorate, and I can change this tip to any other tip that I want. As long as they're the standard size tips, I can keep changing the tips out without having to start a new decorating bag. Icings. Today we're using the, uh, the Alan Tatro line of buttercream. This is a pre-made buttercream icing that's great for decorating. This is a vanilla icing. When you, if you purchase an icing for decorating like this, just make sure you stir it up before you use it. Um, if you need a recipe for icing, in our last basics video, 
I did an entire YouTube on how to make different types of icing. And the American buttercream recipe works very, very well for decorating. So I'm just going to mix this up a little bit. And that's ready to go. Put that aside. I have some teal blue also ready to go. And that's the color we're going to decorate in today. So hopefully you'll be able to see it better on the camera. So I don't want to overfill this bag. I don't want it more than half full. Okay. And we're going to start with a star. And I'm going to use a number 30 tip for that. Now, when I mention the tips that we're using for a border, it's all interchangeable. If you want to use an 18 or a 22 or a 199, you can use whatever you'd like. The ones that I'm choosing tend to give the best definition for that type of border. So for a star border, I like using a closed tip. It's going to give you a, a nicer and a more detailed border. Always burp the bag. After you put the icing in, just squirt a little bit into the bowl of icing. If you don't do that, as you start decorating a cake, that air bubble that's in there will start coming out and it just sort of makes a mess all over the side of the cake. It just shoots icing out and it'll actually make an air hole right in the side of your cake. So always expel the air. Grab the bag between your thumb and your first finger. Give it a twist and you're gonna be pressing from these fingers. This is where all the pressure comes from the palm of your hand and your fingers. Um, don't try to squeeze like this and let the icing go out the top. You're going to have a mess. So keep that twisted and tight and then all the pressure comes from here. So decorating in general is all about pressure control. It's all about squeezing and releasing and how much pressure and when to pull that pressure back. The other uh, part that's very important is the angle that you approach the cake or the board or the side of the cake. The angle that you come in at is also very important. So we're going to start with the easiest border of all and that's the star border. And that is completely up and down, 90 degrees, straight up and down. All I'm going to do is I'm going to squeeze, I'm going to relax the pressure, and then I'm going to lift out. So I'll just do one. I'm going to squeeze, relax the pressure, and then lift up. What a lot of people tend to do is they don't let go of the pressure and they keep lifting up and then they get these points. So squeeze, relax the pressure, and pull straight up. I'm not twisting the bag, I'm keeping it straight. Now, pressure control will make or break a border, any border, this one included. If I don't put enough pressure, I'm going to end up with little stars. If I put too much pressure, I'm going to end up like this. And you're going to see really irregular shaped stars. So the important thing, again, is try to keep the pressure even and steady and to release it before you pull the decorating bag up. And that's the basic star border. And that's all there is to that one. It's very, very easy. And you can use that on the sides or the bottom of any cake. The next border I'm going to do is a rosette. And I'm going to use a number 18 for that. I like using the open star tips for the rosette. And I'm just going to take this off. For the rosette, you're going to use a 90 degree angle and you're going to be going in a slight circle. And you're going to be finishing in the middle of the circle. So I begin my pressure. I'm going to go around in a circle and then up. And I'm letting go of that pressure before I raise my pastry bag. So go around in a circle, 
finish in the center, release the pressure, and then up. Around in a circle, into the center, release the pressure, and raise it up. Again, just like the stars, if you find that you're going in a circle and you're getting a point in the middle, it's because you haven't stopped the pressure before you, you haven't released the pressure before you lifted the, uh, the bag up in the air. And again, you don't want them all different sizes. You don't want to put too much pressure. You want to keep them all the same so that you get a nice rosette border. So that's the basic star and rosette borders. Next, we're going to do a little bit more complicated. This is a zigzag border. And I'm going to choose a 16. And I just want to note that um, you have to have good eyes to see the numbers on these. <laughs> um, I just want to note that I'm using a Tico decorating tips today. The Wilton are very good. I personally think that the Atico tips are better. They're, they're finer cut, and I think that they make a nicer decoration. These have been my favorite decorating tips for a long time. So the narrow zigzag, I'm going to make a straight border, and I'm just going to go back and forth. This time I'm coming in at a 45 degree angle, not 90, 45 degrees. And you'll notice that I'm often using my other hand, sometimes to support my wrist, sometimes to support the other end of the bag. Whether you're standing over a cake or you're down on a board, you can use both hands so that you get a nice even border. And this one is just a simple, I'm just keeping very even pressure and I'm going back and forth. All the work is being done with my wrist and my hand on the right side. This finger was not pushing the bag back and forth. It was just there to steady my hand. And that's a simple zigzag border. You can do a wide border. This looks good on the top of a cake or even along the bottom of a cake. A wide one is the same thing, except wider. And I would just keep going with that. So those are two very, very basic borders. This is a number 16 tube. I usually recommend using a small tube, 14, 15, 16, for a border like this. Okay. The next one we're going to do is a shell. This is probably the most popular border. You see this all the time. I'm going to use a number 20, an open star tip. It's important when you're, when you're decorating, keep a damp towel next to you and always make sure that the tip is clean. I also want to point out, I've been decorating now for five minutes or more. I've done several different borders and I've only used half of the icing in this 10 inch bag. So unless you're decorating huge wedding cakes, you don't need a pastry bag any larger than that. One more tip while I'm at it. The larger the bag, if you have a warm hand, the faster the icing in that bag will warm up and become very soft and it's very difficult to decorate with. So particularly for those people who have hot hands, always use a, a small decorating bag. And if you find that the icing is getting warm, squirt it out of the bag and put some fresh, cooler icing in the bag. So the shell is at a 45 degree angle. This one, you start by putting some pressure on, pushing the icing out and let it build up and it will curl over itself. And then I'm gonna relax the pressure and I'm pulling down. So again, 45 degree angle, I'm just pressing and that, that shell is kind of rolling back on itself and then I'm relaxing the pressure as I pull away. And that's how you get that thin little tail. These take practice, but once you get used to it and you, you learn how to do it, you can do so many more decorations. So again, 45 degree angle. 
Just let the icing do the work for you. One of the, one of the things that most beginning decorators do is they try to make the little hump in there and they do this. They'll lift and they try to lift it up and it doesn't work. You, want to, you just want to keep the pastry bag nice and steady at the right angle and it will roll over on itself and then just pull it back. And that's the basic shell border. We're going to do a lot of variations on this. So when you're practicing decorating, try to, to get this border down really well and then the rest of them will come much easier for you. Okay, we're going to do a reverse shell. And I'm going to switch back to a number 18 for this. Okay. The reverse shell is also done at a 45, but you have to think about going right or clockwise and then counterclockwise. This isn't a shell, I'm just showing you the motion. You're going to be going in a clockwise rotation and then in a counterclockwise rotation. So I start with clockwise and then go counterclockwise. They're just like little C's. Unlike a regular shell where I'm holding it in place and letting it fold over itself, this time I'm not. So I've done that way, I have to go this way. Notice that the ends of the shell are getting thinner. That's because I'm relaxing the pressure as I come away. And that's a reverse shell border. And that is a beautiful border on any cake. It's one of my favorite. It's not hard to do and it just has a, a nice, I love the movement of it on a cake. Okay, in this next section, I wanna show you how to do brush striping. Now, I'm gonna be using food coloring. You can use a paste food coloring or you can use a gel food coloring. Either one will work well. You can't use a liquid food coloring, so it has to either be a paste or a gel. I've used a parchment paper bag. Now, it's important to note that when you're using decorating parchment, there isn't a silicone lining on this paper. So it allows me to brush some um, food coloring on here and it will adhere to it. If you use a piece of silicone that's used as a baking liner, uh, or excuse me, a parchment paper that has a silicone coating on it that you use as a baking liner, and you make that into a pastry bag, the, the food coloring will not adhere to the paper. It just drips right off and it doesn't work well. So these actually are the Wilton triangles of parchment paper, which work really well for cake decorating. So I've made the bag. I've dropped a number 13 tip in. I've got a little paintbrush and I'm dipping it into the uh, aqua or teal food coloring. And I'm gonna make two stripes. Usually two is all you need. And all I've done is I've painted those right up the side of the bag. And now I'm going to put teal food coloring, or excuse me, teal icing into that bag. The brush striping gives you sort of a very bright and distinct marking on your icing. And that's what I'm trying to get out of this. Okay, so I'm gonna squeeze that bag until I start seeing the color come out. And there you see it. So now I have a two-toned icing. This is great for all kinds of borders. It just really adds a nice a nice bling to the cake that I really like. So the border that I'm going to teach you now is a colonial scroll border and this is free-handed. So when you're learning how to do this, if you want to put a pencil marking down, do it in pencil first and then pipe over it, that will work. So I'm going to begin by going 
I'm going to first make my design and then I'm going to embellish it. So I start with just a C scroll. I'm going to start from the bottom of this scroll and I'm going to make another one. Think of sort of waves. And I'm just going to repeat that pattern. That's the basic scroll. Now from here we embellish it. I'm going to start in the very middle and I'm going to go in a very, very tiny circular motion and I'm going to do the entire, the entire design over. I'm just doing a very, very tiny circle with my tube and keeping a very even pressure. And we'll get the last one. After you've done that, you can put little embellishments. You remember the little reverse shells we did? That's sort of what we're doing here. I'm going to do a little shell there and a shell up here. And that makes a beautiful side border on a cake. So again, it's, this was a number 13 tip, which is the smallest star tip that they make. I made my design first, and then I overpiped it in a, in a very small circular motion. And then I added the little teeny shells. The next one we're going to do, I'll use this side of the board, is the reverse of this one. So I'm going to start again by making the, uh, this, the uh, scroll shape. This time, instead of coming from the bottom and repeating the these pattern, I'm coming from the top down. This time I go from the bottom. And you don't have to worry about these little tails. Even on a cake, if it's not a smooth pattern, it doesn't matter because you're going to be piping over it. And then we do the same exact thing. We start in the middle. And just go in a circular mat pattern. These used to be really popular with wedding cakes. And then again, you're going to put your little, your little shells on. And there is the reverse scroll. So you have the regular C colonial scroll and then the reverse one. That's a tip 13 and we've striped the bag with the, um, the uh, aqua or teal food coloring so that we get that two-tone effect. So let's go on from here we're going to do another type of striping and this is called um, this is called a, a spatula striping. Last time we used a paintbrush and food coloring. This time we're using icing that's already pre-made. So I think this time we're going to stripe this bag with white and we're going to add the teal to it. This is a little bit more tricky. Let's see, I'm going to be making a rope border next. And I'm going to use a tip 18 on the rope. Actually, I'm going to go down to a 17. So, open the bag at least one third of the way down so that you can get to the bottom of the bag. And then use a spatula. And don't put a lot of icing on it and you're going to put it in the bag and just sort of smear it down one side. Think of the same thing you did with the, with the brush, except this time you're doing it with icing rather than food coloring. So all I've done is I've put 
two stripes of white icing in the bag. What this is going to do is this is going to give me a two-tone decoration, just like the last one did, but this is going to be a much softer uh, effect. It's not going to have the, the dark color in it. And then take some green icing or teal, and I'm going to put that right in the center. And just squeeze that until you see the colors come out. And there I already have a two-toned icing. So now we're going to do the rope border. The rope border isn't as difficult as it looks. So it's going to be a little S shape and I'm going to keep repeating the S. So it's important to see where the pieces fit together on this. I'm going to start by making just an S. Now I'm going to come in from this side I'm going to go over the top and again I'm making a little S shape and I keep coming from from below and going over the tail of the piece of, of the decoration I just piped. So come from below and over the tail. So again all I'm doing is I'm making this little S shape over and over and over. You have to envision a twisted rope and I want the rope to come from this piece underneath and go over it. And you can also see the two-tone effect that the spatula striping did. It's not really harsh but it gives a nice, uh, a nice change in, the, in, the, in your decoration. Again this is a 45 degree angle. I'm not going straight up and down. And that's the rope border. Okay, the next border we're going to do is a puff border. And we'll turn this this way. The puff border is also done on a 45 degree angle. Before I make this border, I want to touch on one other element of cake decorating that's very important, and that's your consistency of your icing. If you've noticed, all the decorations I've made have held their shape, the icing isn't running, but I'm not pressing so hard that my hand or my arm shake to get that icing out of the, out of the pastry bag. It is the key element in decorating, is making sure that your buttercream is the right consistency. If you find that it's too soft, you may have to add some more confectioner sugar or cool the icing down if you're, if you're decorating in a hot climate. If it's too hard, you can add a little bit of corn syrup or sometimes a little bit of water. Okay, so for the puff border, I'm going to be starting with a very gentle pressure. I'm going to be building up the pressure in the middle and then relaxing the pressure at the end. So I'm going to start and I'm going in a little squiggle and then I've relaxed it. So the, the middle is fatter and the two ends are thinner and I'm just going in a little zigzag pattern back and forth each as I do this. I really like the way the spatula striping has an effect on this. When I get to the end, I'm relaxing the pressure and then pulling away. So that's the puff border and that's done with the tube 18, but I want to show you the same border, um, let's see, with a 503. Let's see if I can find that. I had it right here, no, oh, I took them out. This one just is a, uh, this is a, a closed star tip and it's going to make a different, a different look to it. So again, I'm going to start You can see how the, uh, the little ridges are closer together and there's more of them. So that's a puff border with two different tips. So you can see 
that just changing the star tip just slightly changes the, what the decoration will look like. There are a lot of embellishments that you can do on a, on a, a puff border and as we get into the more advanced bo borders in future lessons I'll be showing you how you can use string work uh, to, um, uh, to accent these borders. Okay. The next one we're going to do is we're going we're to start working on drop borders, the type of borders that you would put on the side of the cake. So when I come back, I'll have a board set up so that you would actually it'd be as if I were working on the side of a cake so that you can see how to apply decorations on the side of a cake. Everything we've done now works really well on the top of the cake or on the bottom border. So now we're going to start working on side decorations. We'll be right back. For the next decorations, I'm going to be decorating on the side of this, uh, of this board. Um, this is actually a, a Wilton product. Um, this is a, a nice kit that you, it's a practice board and it comes with patterns and templates that you can decorate on. It's actually a very nice board. So what I've done is I've put a piece of cardboard on the front of this so that I can decorate on it today. For side decorations, you have to start by either using a, a garland marker or the side of a cup as I showed in, in a previous uh, decorating video, or you can drop a string or, or um, some sort of a, a pattern so that you can follow that pattern. So I'm using a number 13 tip. Normally I would do this with like a number three tip, which is a plain round tip, but since I'm only using star tips today, I wanted to show you that it can be done with a star tip. So pretending that this is the top of my cake, I'm just going to attach a little bit of icing, I'm going to pull straight out, and then I'm going to bring that over. Now that's not the decoration, this is just the guide of what I'm, uh, uh, for what I'm going to be piping over. So in the next video, we'll be going over string work and I'll talk a lot more about how to do this. We will be using that exact decoration on a cake at the end of this video today. Um, so I, I, I guess I will be teaching it after all, I'd forgotten. So that was a number 13. I'm going to move on to a 16 tube. And if you remember the zigzag border we did in the very beginning, that's all this is. Except I'm going to start with just a really light pressure and I'm just doing a zigzag motion. And this is a drop crescent border and I'm just relaxing the pressure as I reach the tops. So I'm going to start with a very light pressure, but I'm never building to a heavy pressure. Start with a really light pressure, just go back and forth in a little tight zigzag. You have to think about moving your arm at an angle. I find as I get to the end of the, uh, the, end of the, uh, the crescent, I actually have to lift my elbow so that I get a nice even decoration. There, that, I got a little uneven on that one. You'll have to forgive me, sometimes I make mistakes too. So that's a basic crescent border. Now again, that's a border that I would absolutely augment with some string work on another cake. Um, so there's the crescent border. The next one is going to be the uh, circular border. And again, I'm going to drop a couple strings here. I attach it, I pull back, and then I bring it over. If you notice when I do this, I'm not going down with my tip. I'm holding it straight out. I'm, pulling, I'm letting the icing come way out, and then I'm bringing it over. If you try to go down like this, you're going to have very, very uneven uh, drop string work. This time I'm going to use the same number 16 tip, but I'm going to go in a circular motion. This is also called an E, as in the letter E border. So I'm just going to go in a little tight circle. And just as you get to the top, just relax the pressure a little bit so that your decorations are a little bit smaller. And the last one.
So the string that I dropped with the number 13 tip gets completely covered with the decoration. So those are two very basic um, drop borders. I want to do one more with a different tip. Pull straight out and then over. And this time I'm going to switch to a number 74 tip. And you'll notice the 74 is rather unusual um, because there's one really large point in it and then the rest are smaller little cutouts. So it looks like a star tip but it's, it's just a little bit different. And it makes sort of a fun border that I like. So you're going to take that wide, that you can see the back of the tip has the regular uh, little cutouts like a regular star tip. But when you turn it over you'll see that one large cutout. You want that to be facing up toward you. And then this is going to be the zigzag. So it's just like the top border, except it's a different tip. And if you notice, I made these, I made these drops larger this time because this is a much larger tip. So I want it to be a larger decoration. This works really well on large cakes. There, so that's a number 74. So those are the basic um, drop garlands that you can make with star tips. And I'm going to take these off. And when we come right back, I'm going to show you how to make a crown border on the side of a cake. Okay, for the crown border, I'm using a 199 tip. Open star tips, anywhere 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, all work very well. Um, uh, for the crown border as well. This is a shell, but it's done on the side of the cake. So you're going to approach it at a 45 degree angle coming from below. So if you pretend that this were the top of your cake, you'd start here, let the shell go over itself like it normally would, and then pull down. This is nothing but a shell except on the side of the cake. So just to reiterate this, I'm holding this steady at a 45 degree angle. I'm letting it roll over itself and I'm relaxing the pressure and I'm coming back down. Make sure that you start relaxing that pressure as you pull back down or you won't get those nice thin tails on the end of the border. These can be made in all different sizes. You can use even some of the the really large commercial decorating tips. I've done wedding cakes with large 18 or 20 inch bases where you use a really large tip and you make these big sort of really large um, uh, crown shells coming down. Now I can embellish those with a string on the bottom which we'll do at a future lesson or if we go back to the very beginning of this video you can just do a simple rosette little circle, finish in the middle, and pull back. Make sure that you stop the pressure before you pull back. And of course you could do these with accenting colors. And that's a basic crown border. For the last couple of borders I want to show you, we're going to do a lattice first. And I'm going to be doing a lattice like I did on this cake after um, on, on another blank cake to show you how it's done uh, on, on, on a cake. To do a lattice, you're just going to start with a straight line at an angle. Now the first thing you'll notice is I'm not dragging the tip. I'm not holding it straight up and down. I'm at a 45 degree angle. I'm touching it to the cake, lift up, and then pull back. The only way you can get a perfectly straight line is by making sure your icing is right off the board or the cake. And you can use any size tip you'd like for this. 
This happens to be a number 13. And then after you've done the pattern one direction, then you change directions and just go in the opposite way. Again, anchor it. When I say anchor it, I mean touch it to the cake so that it sticks in the frosting you have and then lift it and pull it back. This just requires really steady pressure. And that's a basic lattice. The last thing we're going to do is a, a basket weave, which is a really popular design on the side of a cake. And for that, I'm going to use a number 48. You can use a straight star tube. A 48 is a, is a flat tube. Um, it, it has the little notches like a regular star tube, except it's flat like a ribbon. So to do the basket weave, and this is typically done on the side of the cake, I'm going to start with two up and down strips. Same thing as before. I'm anchoring it, and I'm just lifting it off the, off the cake a little bit. Then start in the middle, and you're going to go right over there, and end it. Now go down one width. So I'm going down one width, I'm leaving one width open, and I'm repeating that. And now over this one, the ends of this, I'm just going to really hide the tails. I make another strip. Now from here I'm going to start in the middle, and I'm going to repeat the process. I'm just keeping the pressure really steady. And then you make another one. The trick is in making them even as you go across. And you can start to see where the design is coming out. You're getting a nice basket weave. I'll do one more. And just to show you um, really quickly, I'm going to use a number 18 or 19 tip, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to start with two rows. I'm going to put these a little closer together because the star tip is not as wide. And I'm just going to go right over that and just leave enough space in between them for the row to follow. And then make another vertical line. And yes, you can make mistakes like this. I'm going to take a quick second. I'm going to grab a tool and I'm going to show you how to fix things like this. Do I have a needle tool here? Here we go. A simple needle tool um, or a cake tester, you can grab the icing from below and you can actually take it right off the cake. Usually I keep a paper towel handy. Let me grab one. You can get under the corner of the icing, especially if it's not a large decoration, and you can lift it right off the cake. And when you go back and you put a new row on, no one will see it. So in between where I did the other ones, and then I'm going to drop another row. So it's the same thing I did with the tip 48, except you can see the different effect it has by using a star tip. And you can't see where I corrected that mistake, where that icing broke on me. And that was because of a little air pocket. And that will happen in decorating. It just, it, it always does. So it's nice to know how to fix small mistakes like that. I hope you've enjoyed learning these, these borders. Um, I'm going to take a quick break and grab 
a cake that's all iced and ready to go and mix up some colors and use some of the uh, borders that, we, that I taught you today and show you how to decorate a cake. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back, ready to decorate a cake as promised using some of the techniques that we learned today. Unconventional technique is using a cake pan as a marker on your cake. When you look at the cake that I did earlier, you'll see that I did a lattice top in a half moon. In order to get that shape on the cake, I have the front of the cake facing me. So the front is right here. So I'm just going to set my cake pan on top and sort of center it and then just gently push down and that is going to leave a nice mark on the top of my cake. I'm going to turn the cake back around. I've got some pale yellow icing and a number 14 tip. So just like I did the lattice on the board, I'm going to start on my, my mark and then about maybe three-eighths of an inch wide I'm going to make a set of stripes all the way across. Again, attach it to the cake and then lift up. And you're going to go to the very end of the decoration. or the pattern, excuse me. Now, what I find is when you get into an area like here where I'm gonna have longer and longer strings, it's hard to figure out where to go up on that mark. So I'm gonna start from the edge of the cake instead when I'm doing my longer strings. And then wherever they land on my mark is fine because they're all gonna be nice and even. There. Now we're going to go in the opposite direction. So start anywhere in the middle that you want and then just go in the opposite direction. And then again I'm going to go from the edge of the cake to the inside. This is just a nice sort of a contrast in texture and decorating to put on a cake. I wouldn't do the whole cake top with it, but a little bit of it adds a nice element to a decorated cake. And then this side. There we go. So that's my lattice. Now, before I uh, decorate the edges of that lattice, I'm going to do the side borders of my cake. Now, when I showed you earlier how to make a mark, I used the number 13 tip and I dropped a string. I have pre-marked uh, pre this using a number 4 tip and just a round string so that I'm ready to go with this decoration. And I'm going to do the circular uh, drape or the it's also known as the e-motion drape. So I'm going to start right here on the side and I'm just going to do a little e-motion going right over that string. Again, when you get to the top of the decorations, because you have two uh, decorations joining, you want to just pull back the pressure a little bit. We'll do a few more.
Just keep a nice even pressure and try to make all the circles as even as you possibly can. It basically comes with a lot of practice. Okay, so we have we have the drop part of this decoration done first. Now you'll notice I didn't do my bottom border for a very specific reason. If I'd already done my bottom border and one of these borders dropped or a piece of it broke off or I had an air bubble and it broke the decoration, it would land on my bottom border. And it's a little harder to pick up after it's stuck to another decoration. You can, you can take a decoration off a cake and sometimes you can even peel them off a shell border or something, but it's just easier to work from the top down to the bottom and that way you never have to worry about cleaning up on top of another border. I'm now going to do the same uh, thing that I did when I dropped a string using the number 13 tube. I'm going to do these in the middle. So I'm going to start inside this decoration, pull out, and I'm going to end it inside. Now to do this, to show you the proper way to do this, I want to make sure you realize that I should be pulling straight out and then over. Because I was doing it at an angle, it's a little more difficult. So I'm pulling straight out and then over. That's the only way you can do this and get a nice even string drop design. And that's going to be the inside of our border. Now for the bottom border, I'm going to do a puff border. And I think I'm going to use eeny, meeny, miny, mo. I have to pick one. We're going to do a number 29. You can use any shell. And I actually think that's too large now that I look at it. So I'm going to, I'm going to back off and I'm going to use a number 18. That's 18. Sometimes until you press that icing through the tip and see how large a decoration you're going to get, you're not quite sure. So I'm going to do this on the bottom of the border. I'm going to start with a light pressure, build to a heavier pressure, and then pull back. Again, that's a 45 degree angle. I'm just doing a zigzag motion, just a light zigzag motion, build the pressure, and then relax it. A turntable really helps in decorating. Sometimes, as when I'm do, doing a border like this, you'll notice that the table is actually turning because the icing is actually pushing it. It's a wonderful Atico turntable. It spins beautifully. But sometimes when you're doing a border like this, you may have to, to hold it so that it doesn't get out of control on you. And we'll do one more. Okay, so now we have the bottom border. So now we're going to do our top borders. I'm going to do, I think we're going to do a white. Now yeah, we'll do a yellow border. That way you can see it better. Um, I'm going to use a number 19 tip. And I'm going to do a shell border, a reverse shell border all the way around the top. I'm going to go right over the ends of this lattice. This is very similar to the other cake I have decorated ahead of time, but I wanted to show you what the difference in adding different colors would do. This is just a little C that I'm making going clockwise and then counterclockwise. 
And then I'll use my number 13. And I'm gonna make just a little shell on the inside of this border. Okay, and I think the last thing I do, I'm going to do is I'm going to drop like a, like a string again on this bottom border. Make sure you go right up to the cake. You want to get right up to the corners. Pull straight out and then go make, whoops. That's a good teachable moment. Again, I'm going to use the uh, the pick and I'm just going to lift that decoration right up. So you can fix mistakes. Okay. So right up to the cake, pull straight out and then right up to the cake. And just repeat that so you get a nice circular pattern. It's important that you get right up to the cake, otherwise it doesn't look like a complete decoration. And then we'll do a little rosette, just like we did on the bottom of the, um, the crescent, um, excuse me, the crown border. Okay. And that pretty well finishes a cake, except for possibly writing on it. Okay, I've grabbed a writing tip, and writing is something I'll do in a future video, so I'll just write now, uh, but so that you can see the, the, the final cake. I'm just gonna write happy birthday on here. Some of it is just over piping and embellishing. There. And that is a complete decorated cake using the lattice, the reverse shell, a very small regular shell. We did the drop uh, circular or E border. We did a drop string. We did a puff border and another drop string and the rosette. Those are all fairly easy borders that you can learn. Just giving it some time, don't put too much icing in the bag, and just take your time practicing and make sure your icing is the right consistency. I hope you've enjoyed this first series of basics of our buttercream decorating. We'll be doing several more, uh, doing string work and flowers and more advanced borders as we go along. All our products are available at globalsugarart.com and thank you for watching.